On behalf of the Store family, we welcome you to the service of celebration and thanksgiving for the life of our dear brother, James Sullivan Store. Thank you for your presence here this morning and for your continued prayerful support on behalf of the family in the days ahead. If you do have a cell phone, we ask you please to ensure that it is powered off or in vibrate mode so that the live stream will go forth without interruption. Thank you. We invite you now to stand the family may remain seated for our opening words of comfort and assurance. The eternal God is our refuge and underneath are God's everlasting arms. God is our refuge and strength, the very present help in the time of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die eternally. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I died, and behold, I'm alive forevermore, and I hold the keys of death and the grave. Because I live, you also shall live. For I am persuaded that neither life or death or anything in all creation shall be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. And so family and friends, we have gathered here to praise God and to witness to our faith as we give thanks for and celebrate the life, the faith and the witness of our dear brother, James Storm. We come together in grief, acknowledging our human loss. And may God grant us grace that in pain we may find healing, in sorrow comfort, and in death resurrection. Our service of celebration continues now as we sing together to the honor of our Lord and in thanksgiving for the life of our dear brother James, our first hymn, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine, oh what a foretaste of glory divine. This is my story, this is my 
you, you may be seated. Please join me as we seek the Father's face in prayer this morning. There's a garden where Jesus is waiting. There's a place that is wondrously fair, for it glows with the light of his presence. Tis the beautiful garden of prayer. From every stormy wind that blows, from every swelling tide of woes, there is a calm, a sure retreat, tis found beneath the mercy seat. So gracious and loving God, the Lord of life, the conqueror of death, and our very present help in the time of trouble, comfort us who mourn, and give us grace so that even in the presence of death we may have faith to worship you. We thank you for Christ, our great high priest, who understands, identifies with, and is close to us, especially in our times of grief and loss and sorrow. And he invites us to come to his throne of grace so that we may find grace and mercy to help in our time of need. We thank you for the gift given to his family and us and those privileged to have known him through the life of our dear brother, James Sullivan Stone, whom you have now received into your nearer presence. Thank you for his journey, 97 years among us. As a brother, husband, father, faithful church member, and follower of the Christ. We remember in prayer this morning all the beloved family members, especially son Troy. Grant them all your comfort, and may they find solace and strength in the precious memories of times shared and spent together. May they know that we are journeying with them and surrounding them with our love and thoughts and prayers. But above all, you are the ever-present one with each one of them. Be with us now as we offer this service to you as a tribute to and celebration of Brother James's life in and through the name of Christ, the one who has promised never to leave us or to forsake us, but to be with us always. In that name, we pray. Amen. Together we repeat the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We are privileged and delighted this morning to have our brother Earl Pinder, one of our leading local preachers here at Ebenezer Methodist Church, who will be assisting us as we lead the service this morning, and also brother Alison Underwood, the president of our men's fellowship, who will be bringing condolences later on in the service. And I want also to acknowledge the presence of the Honorable Member of Parliament, it's Glennis Hanna, who is with us this morning. So good to have you. And others who are here, perhaps from the clergy or the political directorate.
thank you for your support of this family. Brother Earl comes now to continue to lead us. Good morning. First of all, I'd like to offer condolences on behalf of my wife and myself to the family and again, especially to Troy, who now seems to be all alone, I guess, if you like. But I just wanted to reflect just a little bit on um, Brother Storm, Brother Jimmy. I actually, well, naturally I didn't know him when he was young. None of us did, I don't think, because he's much older. I don't think anybody here is over 97, right? But later in life, I mostly knew him through the um, through church and through the men's fellowship and um, focus group and just to mention and he was the only soul in focus group who knew the difference between breadfruit salad and potato salad um, because he had made it already he said anyway i just mentioned that but um also to say for the family you know being right up the road here my earliest reflections is of his daddy walking out Bilney Lane down Shirley Street to come here to church and of course his mummy lived to be nearly a hundred Miss Henrietta and um, and his sister Floris I remember well because we knew her and as a matter of fact she and my mother almost shared the same birthday they were one day apart same age and also i have to reflect on where brother james or jimmy sat right over there we had we heard about four musketeers i'm um, three musketeers there were four who sat in the same seat brother um, jimmy brother leroy archer and brother donald gooding and now we only one we have left is brother cyril and he's filling in the spot and so um, we'll miss Brother James. What I remember of him is, well, let me just say this. Somebody once said of me, does that man ever stop talking? I believe Brother James could have beat me easily in a showdown. But he always talked sense. He liked to talk, reflect on his youth and up in Bilney Lane, out on um, Bay Street, out he knew every soul who lived in all of this area. You know, so, and, and the last thing I want to say, he was always very grateful for whatever you did. And I can still hear him saying to you, I'll never forget you all, right? That, that, that was the word he would always use, you know, so it's always appreciative. But before I finish, I want to say a word of thanks to Sister Jackie Sturrock, who was a godsend for Brother Store. If we were going visiting, we knew Sister Jackie was there to see that some chairs were brought and everything was in order. And in case nobody else said it, I wanted to say it. So um, that's just a few words I want to reflect on how he came across to us, right? He was, and he was always very friendly. Now, our first scripture reading will be read by Bonisha Bethel, and following the scripture reading, I believe we're going to have tribute and reflections. So, Bonisha Bethel. The 23rd Psalm. <clears throat> the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fare no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The word of the Lord.
Good morning. It is a privilege for me today to perform uh, what I will say is double duty. <laughs> um, I am to read the second scripture lesson, but I am also here to offer um, words of tribute and reflection on behalf of my family. I I think about my grandmother, Flores. She had one sister who is still with us today and three brothers. And I lost my uncle Charlie in my 20s. I lost my uncle Jimmy in my 30s. And now I am a few years shy of 50 and I've lost uncle Jimmy, which means that I would have been with him the longest. And when I think about who he was, first of all, he was a man of prayer. Whenever anything came up and it seemed like it was a challenge, he always said, Tracy, but you gotta pray. He was always, and I think the older he got, he just developed this close communion with the Lord. He was a man of prayer. He knew how to take his cares to the Lord in prayer. And I had to smile when, when Reverend Pinda was speaking because um, you could tell that he, he knew Uncle Jimmy just by what he was, was saying. He was really a man of gratitude. It didn't matter what you did for him. There was always a thanks on his tongue. You know, my aunt Elaine and my cousin Daz would have cooked countless Sunday dinners over the years. And it didn't matter what sometimes Elaine would say, you know, um, Jimmy, I, you know, I didn't do maybe like the coleslaw or no macaroni today. And he would say, Elaine! You stop telling me what you didn't do. This is what you did, and I thank you. You know, he was always, always grateful, and I, I took that. You know, when you, the older you get, I think the more um, you reflect on the people who surround you and the people who are leaving a legacy for you to carry on. And so, the older I got, I realized that this was a man of gratitude, and I needed to make sure that the thread of thankfulness ran through my life. Uncle Jimmy was a historian. He would tell you all about political history, social history. He has stories that I have recorded, um, myself being a documentarian, so that I could have those. He's the only one probably in the family whose voice I have on tape so much because he loved to tell stories. He has a first memory of being five years old going to Eleuthera when my Aunt Loe, um, who's just over 90 now, was not even yet born. And he speaks about Jack, he could smile because she knows how he used to talk. He speaks about the sound of the sail on that ship as they sailed to Eleuther. He had an incredible memory. And he really enjoyed the art of conversation. He loved when the family went down and we got together and sat. He loved when the nephews came to see him, um, when the grand um, nieces and nephews, he just loved talking and conversation. And he definitely did have something to say. He also believed in sharing. You know, he was kind, and if he had something, he always um, wanted to share it with his family. And I believe that that's a legacy that he left for Troy and, and for the grandchildren, just this legacy of sharing. But he didn't teef that. That's, that's what we come from, you know. Um, my great-grandmother, days before she uh, died, baked a potato bread on banana leaf and she cut it in pieces and made sure that each of her children and grandchildren had a piece of that. So that was the legacy that we came from. It was always a legacy of sharing and caring. And he really enjoyed the simple things in life. <laughs> Sometimes Lane would buy him ice cream and take it down there and he'd say, Lane, you bring cream? It was never ice cream, it was always cream. And he loved the homemade cake, you know? He didn't, he didn't need the uh, store-bought cake. He loved that, that um, homemade cake. Uh, most of all, Uncle Jimmy was a family man. He delighted. I, I was in nowhere near born when he married my Aunt Patsy, but he delighted in being a devoted husband, and he delighted in being a good father, and I know Troy can attest to that. Unfortunately, Terry predeceased him, but he was a father to the end, and it didn't care how old those boys were. <laughs> he, he was their daddy, and, and, and he took great pride in being just that. And it was a wonderful thing to see. Um, him being a family man, it, it, it gives me great pleasure to stand here today and to see all of the witnesses that have come out to say, yes, I knew him, and he made a difference in my life. 
and we have, uh, you know, his, his Uncle Josh daughter, we have uh, the grandchildren of his grand aunt, Dool, Joy and Priest are here. We have his nephews all sitting in, in one row. Clint is not here, but Joe, Juan, and Peter are here with us, the, the sons of his brother Stanley and his um, sister Dolores. Uh, we have my mom, whom he called Sernia all her life. She was Sernia. <laughs> She's here, and my aunt Elaine, who was his right hand, his left hand, piece of the back. And I'm glad that Reverend Pinder spoke about Miss Jackie, because Miss Jackie was an angel, honestly, um, an angel. Um, so it's just so good to see all of the family here today. And um, my Uncle Jimmy has gone on to be with the Lord. I have no doubt about that. And I am thankful and very, very grateful for the legacy of love and caring that he left with me and for all of us to continue and carry on. Our second lesson is taken from the Gospel according to St. John. It is the 14th chapter, verses 1 through 6, and then verse 27. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go ye know, and the way ye know, and Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither you goest, and how can we know the way? And Jesus saith to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Verse 27, peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Here is the word of the Lord. Following our next hymn, we will have condolences by Brother Allison Underwood, the president of the Ebenezer Men's Fellowship. Our next hymn is, um, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. We'll stand to sing. The family can remain seated.
That psalm and Psalm 23 is a both a comfort, a healer of our spirits during a time of bereavement. Jimmy was a Pondite. I am a Pondite. I once told somebody, I am from the Bain town in the east. What do you mean by that? I say I'm from the pond, east of Church Street. And they question that. Well, we were poor in those days. My daddy was started out, he wasn't, he had money, but not like all the people. And as I reflect on Jimmy, that I knew him all my life as, as a boy, growing up here next to Malcolm's Garage, there were the days when Shirley Street was one way, going east. It wasn't like now, we were going west, and we were I-95. It was through Jimmy that I learned to hop on a truck and drive a standard shift on the premises of Malcolm's garage. I didn't have my license, so I did not go on the public road. In those days, Malcolm's truck was used to make service calls. You had a flat tire, a battery problem, something wrong with your engine. We would come out, and I used to ride along sometime with Jimmy, because I used to help him get the flat tire off of the wrench and so forth. There were the times when service trucks were needed in Nassau, way back. I got my driver's license at 17 years and four months old with a standard shift. I say that to mention that the boys around the station working at the time gave me the privilege to drive around the station premises to get used to the stick shift and to maneuver a truck. Jimmy was often called in, and I remember during Christmas time in particular that I reflected on James coming to my father's house, get new costumes ready. Jimmy loved Christmas, and he loved Junkanoo. My dad was on the Junkanoo committee at that time. He worked along with people like A.B. Malcolm and others. I think it was a man that lived on Hawkins Hill. And some other people were on the committee at that time. So my dad, out of little money, being a merchant on Bay Street, where Scotiabank is now, that was known as J.P. Sands Food Store, where all the boats would sail in at the time. And it was the start of the motor boats in the 50s that would bring all their commerce from the outer islands to Nassau so they could sell it, sponges included. So Daddy would paste costumes with Jimmy at Christmas time. And he would give Jimmy a little incentive with this costume making to come around and wake in the costumes. Jimmy was always what they call in the individual category of Junkanoo. That was when just a few people were able to go out in their costumes. I learned to make glue out of flour and water to pace the pants and the shirts and what have you. We went to the stop and shop to buy our merchandise. That was the own fabrics in those days. Jimmy was a hard worker. Jimmy was strong, physically. After I left home and got married in the 60s, I lost track of Jimmy for a little while, although he was in church at times, but 
So about 25 years or so ago, I saw Jimmy at church on a regular basis, and I talked with him a lot. I didn't know that he was friendly with Jack Knowles and Thelma Knowles. Now Jack Knowles was one of the partners, along with three, two other people, so he was the third one, of Family Guardian Insurance Company. And apparently Jimmy had connections with them and he worked for them somehow. I don't know the whole story. But he had a friendship with the, the family. So Jimmy would ask me, did you see outside the church on a Sunday morning, did you see Thelma yet? I said, Jimmy, are you waiting on who? Thelma knows? I said, yeah, um, she hasn't come in yet, I don't think. And he would wait because she had an envelope for him every Sunday morning that she was able to bring some money to him. Why? Because she, Jimmy had formed a relationship with her from way back. And she knew Jimmy didn't have the means of buying food and stuff like all the people. And she would have this envelope ready for him. Jimmy Love would be called an Ebenezer as a focus group, which is established in, what, oh, 50, uh, 25 years ago? Yes. Yeah, something like that. So that, is, uh, that established a relationship. We here at Ebenezer have lost our second oldest member of this church. There's one older, and it's Lady Holly Knowles, Sir Durwood's wife, who's, I think, about 99, is it? 98, 99. She's the oldest member of our church. We, as the Ebenezer Men's Fellowship, used to love to go to see Jimmy out there on next to East-West East -West Highway. We would go and James would always be talkative and he wanted to see us from church. From church. He loved this Ebenezer like we all do. Jackie Stir, bless her heart, was one that I don't think Jimmy would have lived as long as he did without Jackie. Former nurse, she was a great caregiver. Jackie, I know you're going to miss James. You gave him a lot of love, a lot of comfort, a lot of service. You know, service to mankind is one of the greatest things we can do, besides being service to God. We'll miss James. May his soul rest in peace. Amen. Following our next hymn, Reverend Milton Lightman will bring the meditation. The hymn is, The King of Love My Shepherd Is, Whose Goodness Faileth Never. We'll stand to sing. The family can remain seated.
Thank you. Please be seated. We would like to express our profound gratitude and appreciation to all of those individuals who have participated this morning in this service of thanksgiving and celebration. Thank you for your ministry to the family. Beloved family and friends, we have gathered together this morning in this homegoing service to remember, give thanks for the life, faith, and witness of our dear brother, James Sullivan Storm, son, brother, husband, father, devoted church member, community activist, and follower of our Lord. We are indeed grateful to God for his pilgrimage among us of 97 years. 97 years, what a milestone. He was truly blessed with longevity of life. And I believe the word of scripture was fulfilled in his life, which tells us, as thy days, so shall thy strength be. On behalf of my family, and the Ebenezer Methodist Church family, his spiritual home for decades, I extend to you, the family, especially Troy, our deepest sympathies and condolences. And may the precious memories of your departed loved one be a source of comfort and consolation and healing in the days ahead. Please allow me, which has already been done, a moment to express a word of gratitude to Mrs. Elaine Thompson and other family members for the help given to Brother Jimmy for many, many years. We also thank the Men's Fellowship and the Focus Group for their ministry to our brother James Stone. And a huge, huge thank you as was already highlighted, to his angel of mercy, Miss Jackie Sir, for her devotion to and care for not only Brother Jimmy, but Terry and Troy as well over these many, many years. And may you be immensely blessed and rewarded for your faithfulness to them. For our moments of meditation, remaining time that we have, I want to focus on three words which I believe describe, sum up the life of our brother James Stone. And one has been highlighted already during the service. They are faithful, grateful, and watchful. Firstly, notice, Brother James Storr was faithful. I was privileged to have known Brother Jimmy since 1997, when I first came to Ebenezer Methodist Church. And from that time until his departure from us, he was a man with a sure and solid faith, which showed itself in his faithfulness. He was indeed faithful to his God, the one who created and loved him. He was faithful to his Christ, the one who redeemed and gave himself for him. Yes, he may have faced some challenges in life, as we all do, but he remained faithful to the one who called him. He was faithful and committed to his family, as was mentioned, his wife and two sons, Troy and Terry, the granddaughter. And he sought to provide for them to the best of his ability. Our brother James was also faithful to his beloved Ebenezer Methodist Church. 
And during the years he was able to, he actively attended the services here at Ebenezer and was involved in its various ministries. His love for his church was known and indeed shown. On my pastoral visits to him, he would often say to me, Rev, I just can't say enough about my Ebenezer church. I have no fault to find with Ebenezer's people. His faithfulness was lived out in response to the faithfulness God had shown to him throughout his life. And he could truly say, great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Our brother James's life, I believe, challenges us to lives of faith and faithfulness in this time in which we live. As the writer to the Hebrews reminds us, we believe that God is and that God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So our brother Jimmy was faithful. But secondly, our brother Jimmy was grateful. And this has been the theme throughout the service so far. Our brother James had a heart of gratitude. He was always so, so grateful for all that was done for him. He tried to live out the words of the Psalms. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his holy name. He was ever grateful to God for the gift given to him, the gift of life given to him for 97 years and for all the daily blessings of life which he enjoyed. He was grateful for the people who touched his life in different ways down through the years. His words often spoken to me were these, Rev, I can never say thanks enough to all those who have been so so good to me. He was a man with a grateful heart. In Luke's Gospel, chapter 17, verses 11 through 19, we read about ten lepers that came to Jesus seeking to be healed from their leprosy. Jesus said to them, Go and show yourself to the priests. They turned around and were on their way to the priests. And while they were on their way, something miraculous took place. Limbs that had been gone for years suddenly reappeared. They were all healed as they made their way to the priests. But after having received their healing, only one turned around and went back to find the healer. And when he found him, he fell at his feet in worship and made there an altar of thanksgiving to Jesus for the miracle which he had received. And we call our Lord's words to him. Were there not ten? Where are the nine? The only one that came back was a Samaritan. And he came 
expressing his profound gratitude to Jesus for his healing. Our brother James, I believe, was that Samaritan who showed an attitude of gratitude. Ah, yes, in a world where so many are so quick to complain about everything. Let us seek to have an attitude of gratitude to God and to others who impact our lives, who touch our lives, who minister to our lives. Let's give thanks with grateful hearts. Let's give thanks to the Holy One, as did Jimmy Storm. All good gifts around us are sent from heaven above. Then thank the Lord, or oh, thank the Lord, for all his love. He's faithful, grateful. But finally notice, he was hopeful. Our dear brother James had a blessed hope for the future. Like Abraham, he too looked for a city whose builder and maker is God. He believed and accepted the words of our Lord to his disciples in John's Gospel, chapter 14, read for us so beautifully by Miss Patricia. Let not your heart be troubled. As he looked into the faces of those troubled, bewildered, and sorrowful disciples, knowing that very soon he would be gone from them. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go, I shall come again and receive you unto myself. So that where I am, there you may be also. And on the morning of his death, his departure. Our brother James peacefully transitioned from this temple realm to his eternal home, where he was welcomed by his Lord. Well done, good and faithful servant. And to thou, into the joy of your Lord. Yes, he fought a good fight. He finished his race. And he kept the faith. And he has now taken his place among that great multitude in heaven, which no one can number from every nation, tribe, kindred, and language. And there God will wipe away all tears from our eyes. And there will be no more suffering, sorrow, separation, crying, parting, or mourning. For the former things will have passed away. And so we say, child of God, well done. Rest from thy loved employ, the battle fought, the victory won. You have entered your master's yard. The pangs of death are past. Labor and sorrow ceased. Life's long warfare closed at last. Thy soul has been found in peace. May God continue to bless and comfort you, family, especially to all. And may his memory continue to be a source of blessing and healing in the days ahead. Amen? Amen. I invite you now to stand with me for our commendation, benediction, and then our recessional hymn.
into your loving hands, O merciful Savior. We thank you for and commend our brother, James Sullivan Storm. Acknowledge, we beseech you, a sheep of your fold, a lamb of your flock, and a child of your redeeming. We thank you that you have received them into the arms of your mercy and into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, into the glorious company of the saints of light, where he will reign with you through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Lord and his Savior. Amen. And now may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, may he equip us with everything good that we may do his will, working in us that which is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom we praise, glory, and honor, now and forever. Amen. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to sing, it is well, it is well with my soul. And on the singing of the fourth verse, Brother Pender, Brother Allison and I will leave the platform and head down to the head of the casket as we prepare to lead the casket to its final resting place. My sin, Lord. 